Great. Hello and welcome. Hi, you guys. Hello. Hello. Nice to going? see you again. I can't believe this is the last of our 101 American Single Malt Whiskey Education Series. Um, it's so good to see you guys here again. This week we are talking about barrel aging whiskey. So we're at the very end of our whiskey making process. And we're going to talk about what the kind of the science of the wood, uh, what makes the wood impart flavor, what are the different processes, and then really get into the impact of new versus used casks. So it's our final episode. We have Phil, founder and chief whiskey maker of Wonderback Whiskey, and also my husband. Hello, my love. We have Blake Kaiser from That's Neat. And we also okay. have Sean from That's Neat. Um, they are our very favorite um, whiskey podcast. They do all sorts of great uh, whiskey-based podcasts that you can find um, at um, That's Neat Podcast on Instagram or on a podcast station. So check them out. Um, so what else do we need to say? I think we should just really start getting into the conversation. We're gonna take about 30 to 40 minutes of your time um, and you know, you guys, sure. uh, well, maybe cheers, a first of cheers as it's our last episode. <laughs> and uh, let's get into it. I'll hand over to you, Blake. All right. Thank you. And um, today we're going to be talking about wood and how. <laughs> <laughs> and chuckle, and chuckle. Wow. chuckle, what, kind chuckle. Kind of what, what kind of podcast have I signed up for? Here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, the impact wood has on our whiskey, and it's definitely one of the major impacts. It probably makes up 70, 80 percent of the flavor profile of the whiskey. Wood has a huge impact over the whiskey's flavor. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the compounds and what wood is the the barrels are made out of. Um, usually they are oak, or if it's whiskey, it's always oak. And the compounds of this material, now we're getting down to the cellular compounds. Um, one is cellulose. We won't get into that very much, but it's basically what holds the wood together so your whiskey doesn't leak out all over the floor. And then there's, um, and that doesn't have a huge impact on flavor. But the hemicellulose, correct me if I'm saying these wrong, these are uh -huh. <laughs> these are pretty pretty scientific names, right? So um, this uh, is possibly one of the most important compounds of the of the wood, and it happens when the wood is charred or toasted. And this has the most impact on the color and the flavor of the whiskey. It adds a lot of those classic flavors such as caramel toffee um, and a lot of those nutty flavors that you can get um, like hazelnut um, sometimes like a dry peanut um, and that's that's very important and it's very uh, classic flavors that happen during during the aging process within the within the barrels another compound is the ling lignins which right. is is that okay okay perfect <laughs> Um, this is another really um, important compound within the oak. Um, this gives off uh, a lot of the vanilla and the spicy flavors. And it actually, the more your barrel is charred, the more spicy and, and, and smoky these lignans can uh, impact your, your, your whiskey. So it has a lot to do with the aromas as well, the, the smells of, that you're going to be getting off your whiskey. Um, and that's, you get a lot of those, those almost hot pepper, spicy, smoky, and then the sweet vanilla uh, type flavors as well. So lignans are very important. The next compound we'll be talking about is tannins and the impact they have on the whiskey. And this usually occurs in fresher oaks or woods and the tannins can be reduced um, by seasoning the wood or drying it out for um, sometimes a number of years or months. Um, and the higher, again, the like lignans, the higher the, the char on the wood or the toast, the less impact these tannins will have. Sometimes tannins bring in a less desirable flavor. Um, so it lends to some 
bitter astringent flavors in the in the whiskey but some tannins are very important because it gives the whiskey its texture and a lot of its mouth feel so it's very important that tannins are there um, but it's a fine balance on on the that compound especially um, the last uh, compound that we're going to be talking about is lactones and this is uh, most commonly found well it's found in all oak but it's in higher quantities in the American oak species. Um, these, uh, especially the more your wood is toasted or charred, um, these lactones um, contribute to those woody type flavors. So kind of like coconut aromas, uh, coconut husk, especially um, sometimes cloves or baking spices, a lot of those warming spices, those lactones can tr contribute to. And again, like tannins, the more the char on the barrel has, the less impact these lactones have on the whiskey. So there's a really fine balance between char, toast, um, the, the how long your barrel was seasoned for, and to how much these compounds impact your whiskey. And um, maybe I like to bring in Phil a little bit into this conversation, and um, maybe he has uh to uh like to elaborate a little bit on um these compounds and what he's looking for is like the perfect balance when when you're picking a barrel yeah well so um you know for i think uh, i have um the barrel is an amazing vessel you know we it, it was uh, to be beneficial to whiskey or, or you know, we, we, it, it, the barrel was used to transport whiskey for forever. Mm. And what became, what was discovered by accident is that it actually has an amazing ability to turn new make spirit, which is clear and has some pleasant things about it, tastes and smells, but also a lot of unpleasant things. It was found almost by accident or by accident to actually make a lot of those negative things go away and, and add some very positive things. And so um, they're quite a fascinating thing, these barrels. Not only are they a great place to store whiskey or, or spirit, but they actually then turn something that's somewhat good but fairly mediocre into something that can be quite amazing. And um, mm -hmm. so you know, the things you talked about are clearly the um, uh, molecules that play the role in this. And uh, this organic chemistry stuff can be quite, quite dull to read, um, <laughs> but, you know, it is, is crucial. And, and so um, it, I, I guess what we're trying to do with our whiskey is take this spirit that's made with malted barley that has some really nice, pleasant things at its core, these pleasant malty type uh, flavor compounds and put it in a vessel that complements it. Uh, and mm -hmm. so um, we love many different types of whiskeys, as I've said before in our, in our podcast. <laughs> I, have a, I have a bit of a soft spot, obviously, for malt whiskey. And, and the reason for that is um, I like those flavors of malt. And so what I'm trying to do with our whiskey is complement them. And so you take a bourbon, for example, a bourbon has a, a characteristic sweetness that it derives from the corn that it's made from. And, uh, and then you put it in a cask. Typically, the traditional American bourbon cask would be a heavily charred cask. And if you look at a charred, if you look at a, the in, so all this is happening on the inside, obviously. So most people, when they look at a cask, would, would never know what that would look like. Um, but if you're able to look at an empty cask or even a full one or partially full one, you know, shine a light inside it and have a look. And inside what you'll see on a charred cask is, you know, this, this black, dark gray, even, you know, ashen. Ash is mostly gone by that time. But, you know, basically these coopers are lighting a fire inside this cask or barrel and charring the wood uh, at a very, very high temperature. You're burning the wood. So it starts to get this uh, texture. It looks like, you know, an alligator skin texture. And it's very, very black. And um, most of the flavor compounds at the very black 
layers are gone. They're burnt. They're reduced. This is these carbons now have been have been burned, or uh, energy has been added. They act as a good filter, but it's the layers that are deeper to that really black layer where you've got some really interesting uh, flavor compounds. A lot of astringent compounds. So you have a you know in classic bourbon that would be a very you have a sweet married with a um, astringent, some of the phenols you talked about earlier, Blake. Um, we, we, our casks are very lightly charred, but heavily toasted. So mm -hmm. basically what we're asking our coopers to do is apply a heat that's not quite as high as you would apply for a charred layer uh, and apply it for a longer period of time. So you get a deeper depth of <clears throat> what I would call usable flavor compounds. So you're applying heat at a, a lower temperature for a longer time and you're getting a toast, a, a, mm -hmm. toast, a thicker or a deeper toast, uh, uh, multiple de uh, toasted layers. And um, that gives us a, a, a flavor uh, that we're, well, what we're trying to achieve is a flavor. So it's not as heavy in the phenols, I don't feel. Yeah. It has more of the... Um, um, more of the, uh, you could call them warm flavors, and I do too, you know, I think of them more as the, and I believe those are more deriving from the lactones, um, but these are more mm. of the warmer flavors that I like, and um, less of the astringent flavors. Um, right. And so, yeah, our, our casks are heavily toasted and lightly charred for that reason. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a perfect segue into how the barrels, I mean, you touched on it a little bit, but how the barrels impact the flavor. And yeah. Sean has got um, a little bit to say about that. So let's give it awesome. to Sean. Let's Take talk away, about Sean. All right, barrel yeah. impact. So I think barrels are extremely exciting. And anyone that loves whiskey is always curious as to what's actually going on inside that barrel to do what it's going to do. Um, so one of the first main uh, methods or i guess variables is more of the correct term to use is extraction so i think this is when we talk about a lot about where you age the whiskey like what the temperature is doing so you get all kinds of different whiskeys from different climates part of the reason for that is is because when the temperature rises uh the pressure inside that barrel increases so kind of in a way the, the the whiskey inside gets absorbed um somewhat into the barrel itself so it's almost like they get to marry each other get to know each other for a bit and then once the temperature drops, depending where the, your barrels are being aged and the, the climate that it's in, uh, the pressure drops again. And then the, um, the whiskey comes back out almost from where it's been staying, getting to know the, the wood of the barrel and all the different compounds we were just talking about. And so when that happens, it brings all types of different flavors from uh, the, the wood pours. So if you have a barrel that's aging for multiple seasons, it's kind of got this like ebb and flow effect of it's, it's going into the barrel, it's coming back out of the barrel. So that's kind of cool. I never actually really knew too much about that really um, a few years ago, but reading it more into it, it's, it's uh, amazing what's going on just through a simple bit of letting it sit around, let it mature, let the barrel do the work. One of the next uh, big things is oxidation. So this is the oxygen that actually comes in through the walls of the barrel. Doesn't mean your barrel is leaking, but there is going to be some oxygen that gets through and that has a chemical reaction with the whiskey inside. So a lot of times you, when this happens, you're, you're kind of getting a lot of the fruity flavors, the spicy flavors, maybe even minty, depending on what's going on. Um, so the oxidation is a huge part of making flavors more complex. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, Phil, but that's, that's my understanding of um, how oxidation is working. Like it's, it's, it's also having a huge effect, similar to extraction, but in a totally different way, which is pretty, which is pretty amazing. So the more um, complex that your whiskey is uh, before maturation, the more oxidation helps influence those flavors or maybe maybe pull out things that are highlighted um, within the actual tasting of that whiskey. So yeah, definitely oxidation is a huge, huge impact. And I was always confused by that. I was like, wouldn't you not want to have oxidation before I knew much about whiskey? But I didn't know about this whole process that happens when you do oxidize things. So it's pretty cool. Again, it doesn't mean your barrel's leaking, but means that there's a lot going on inside the barrel you're probably not even thinking about. Uh, one of the other things is uh, this method called subtraction. Um, so you have things called sulfides that need to be filtered out. And this is done by creating a filter <laughs> of, of charring 
inside the barrel. So it, it's kind of similar to like when you're filtering water <clears throat> and you get the little, those little specks of carbon that you don't want to be drinking, get those filtered out kind of thing. So that happens with whiskey where the sulfides actually get filtered um, through the charring that's inside the barrel. So it subtracts the things you don't want to taste, whether that's like um, gunpowder, metallic taste, something that's not going to sit well when you're trying to enjoy a good, good uh, single malt or scotch or uh -huh. bourbon, whatever type of whiskey you're having. You don't want to have gunpowder in your mouth. I know I don't. So those types of things are helped with this process of subtraction acts as a very fancy filter. And then probably the most exciting and the things we're always wondering about is the magic and mystery step. Sometimes you can follow the exact same steps for every single whiskey, yet somehow one next to the other is going to be different. So there's always going to be something happening where it's specifically what's going on with the wood. And there's kind of a fun unpredictability factor going on with the magic and mystery, which I kind of want to talk to Phil a bit more about that specific thing. It's the like magic, you, the, the magic and the mystery. How do you account for it? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. So there, there, I, I, I think that's a really, really fun thing to talk about. But I wanted to um, sort of. I think the way you outline that is great, and I love the way that that was blocked out. <clears throat> the way I think about it um, is these barrels breathe, mm -hmm. they breathe, and they breathe a lot when the temperatures swing more. So we see much more change in the characteristics of our whiskey in the in the warmer months that we're just about to enter now. So during the winter, the barrels, things are pretty dormant. There isn't a whole lot of movement in and out of the wood. Mm -hmm. There aren't big temperature swings. Um, and but, but, but when you get into the spring and you get those temperatures above 60 degrees and the, you know the ambient temperature got, starts to rise, Mm -hmm. And then you get the hot days and the, and, the, and the cool nights. The barrels breathe, and that and that breathe. You know that the mo one of there are so many fun things to think about when you s start to think about barrel aging. Um, and uh, what's amazing, just the other day, I was filling a bunch of barrels, really nice barrels, with some really nice new make spirit. And I still I stowed them away, and I thought, you know, this. Most people would think that we're stowing this away in this inert vessel to basically sit and do nothing for the next three plus years. But in reality, every day you have this workhorse that you, this barrel, this workhorse that's basically going to breathe whiskey mm -hmm. for the next three plus years. And take this spirit, which already is fairly nice. It was a nice. It's a new make that's really got a nice nose, um, but they're it's very thin, very immature. And take it, and through that act of breathing over the next three plus years, going to basically give us this amazing spirit. And and so it's that I, I think of it as breathing. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so, like you say, when things are warm liquid spirit moves into the wood the pressure increases whiskey moves into the wood and then and it's cool things contract and tighten and things move out <clears throat> oxygen moves through and oxygen is a very important you know the, the nice thing one of the reasons that i there are two reasons that i decided to do spirits in my day work i have to worry a lot about um, bacteria and infection and it's probably the number one thing that I worry about with the work that I do uh, outside of this distillery. But because of the high alcohol content of this whiskey, I don't have to worry about that as much. Um, but then the other thing is that's nice, different from wine and beer, oxygen is actually a good thing. Oxygen in, in spirits, in whiskey, is a, is a very, very, can be a very positive thing. It doesn't cause... Most of the time when you apply oxygen to things like beer and wine, uh, it, it produces molecules and taste compounds that are, are, are less desirable. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting about whiskey is that when you add oxygen, uh, it, it generally produces more, more favorable uh, uh, taste compounds. And that's quite nice because there's, a, you know, it's nice to not to have to worry about bacteria or oxygen. Um, and so uh, 
it will lead, I think, into our discussion of previously used casks versus new casks. But, um, mm -hmm. but you know, magic and mystery, the thing you were talking about at the end there, mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you. It's one of the most, well, the, you know, what's interesting about this making a whiskey is people ask me, you know, so how did you, how did you figure out not having done this before that, you know, how to make whiskey that tasted good? And, and, and my typical response to that is, you know, if you take good ingredients and you treat them well and you put them in things that are also treated well, like a barrel that's treated well, mm -hmm. um, out come, at the end, if you treat it properly and you do it properly and you do it for enough time, out, out comes very nice things at the very end. Um, but wood, I mean, you can imagine a, a barrel is made of uh, American white oak, generally what we use, Quercus alba. And it, it grows in places that are diverse. Generally, the Ozarks are a place in the U.S. where we grow a lot of really nice white oak, but there are other places as well. And we have some species of oak in the Northwest that are interesting as well that people are using and we're looking at as well. But, you know, all of those trees, you look up at a tree, the same species, they're all different. They grow in a different place with different soil. They're exposed to different environments. The sun hits them differently. They have different cold, hot cycles. So you can imagine that the wood would be different. And, and, and so, and then you take that wood, you can cut it differently. You can age it differently. You can kiln dry it versus air dry it. You can dry it for a different amount of time. And it turns out that if you put a piece of wood in a nice environment and you let it age in the air where mold is and, and different organisms crawl around it, and break things down in different ways. It turns out that that wood actually, when you when you then put a spirit next to it, it makes things taste better. And so, you know, I, I it's not really a topic that we want to talk about today. We can talk about <laughs> it another time. I'd love to, but you know, yeah. we 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 hear every few years talk about artificially accelerating the aging process. So. Various companies will talk about adding heat and mm -hmm. adding energy in different ways and uh, putting things like wood staves and whatever uh, in, mm -hmm. in your spirit and accelerating the aging process. And I always find them quite interesting. And I, and, I, and I definitely think that there are things that we can learn from these folks. But it turns out if you really take this whiskey and you compare it to a well-aged whiskey that's put in a, a good vessel, a good barrel, and you age it in a proper place, well, you first start with a good new make spirit, and you age it in a proper place for the right amount of time, mm -hmm. there's a certain threshold that you need to act, uh, pass at least, and it's usually three plus years, depending on your climate. Um, you can make better spirit than if you accelerate it. And I don't, yes. I don't suggest that we will never get to a time where we can accelerate aging, but we're, I haven't seen it quite yet. And people will argue with me, I'm sure, but I think <laughs> if you typically take a non-smoked whiskey, the, the best way to age it is just to give it time and mm -hmm. put it in the right place, in the right mm -hmm. vessel. Um, but anyways, I don't want to go on to, into that. I, well, that's, oh, that's, that's okay. That point. I feel like that would kind of like eliminate the whole extraction process the way it's described, right? Like you, you're giving it that time for it to come in and out, ebb and flow with the whiskey. Well, so, yes, unless you could artificially, and I don't want to go down this. This, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that this. I, what's way more interesting is the mystery and some of the science that we've just touched mm -hmm. on. Way more interesting than this. Uh, but that happens I, you all the time. You're like, how did this one turn out completely different to this barrel that it's aged right next to it, right? Yeah, um, and I think that has to do with. Um, so there are microclimates in the distillery. So there are swings that are different depending on what floor you're on. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, the wood itself. We buy barrels from similar cooperages. We have specifications for what we want and how the wood is aged and how it's prepared. But every tree is different. And so mm -hmm. there's no, it's not a great mystery as to why, even though you order a, a barrel that is a standard volume, 53 gallons, and you order it made of you know, wood that is aged outdoors for a certain period of time, generally two years plus, and then you add heat, the, you know, we ask for a high a high toast, low char, all of those variables can be different. Um, yeah. 
and and uh, and therefore it, it's not that surprising that each barrel can be unique. Um, uh, so yeah, it's but it's very it's really really fun to see that you know and and uh, it's one of the things that makes uh, well one of the many things that makes making whiskey fun is is that is that mystery that that thing that makes things different from time to time you know mm -hmm. yeah, thrill. So I, 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 I don't mean to go off. I, I go off <laughs> the engine. I go off in a tent. The good well, news is Smash is not here to pull us back. So. <laughs> Oh, she's here. She's in the background. Oh, <laughs> God. All right. I'll hear <laughs> no, I was just um, that, that. That's a good segue kind of into um, we we're kind of talking about these components and compounds and kind of the impact. Sorry, somebody is probably driving by in their hot rod right now. But um, we and, and, oh, good. <laughs> I could. <laughs> and uh, uh, and it's kind of. Um, reminiscent or you're probably thinking of a new barrel when you're thinking of these compounds and the new char and the new toast but maybe phil you could kind of describe the different impacts um and i know you guys used uh previously owned or previously used barrels versus yeah. new barrels and maybe yeah. you could kind of just describe the the different impacts those have yeah so i mean we've touched on this before but you know one mm -hmm. of the things one of the main drivers of what we're trying to do here is to create a, a a balanced spirit where the various flavor compounds and and additives or or extract extractions are balanced and so mm -hmm. um you know as i said i love some of those malt derived flavors um i love some of the wood derived flavors um, and, and I don't want any of them to overpower the others. So, you know, when we, when we age whiskey, we start with new oak. We're making a malt whiskey, which it starts out very similar, apart from the specialty malts, which we talked about previously. It is quite similar to a, uh, an Irish or a Scotch whiskey, uh, Japanese whiskey. Um, but we start with new oak, which is different from what they would typically use. And and new oak is a powerful uh, flavor uh, uh, source. Mm -hmm. and, and so we we we're trying to be careful not to use that mainly from extraction those flavor compounds that you derive from a new oak cask. Mm -hmm. um, and so then we look at so you know. When I first started to do this, I didn't really appreciate the the value of a previously used cask and what that can do. I didn't realize that if you put whiskey that has a lot of flavor, but has some rough edges, <clears throat> if you put that whiskey in a cask that has, let's say, very little flavor to add, so something that's had a lot of those casks that you see in the background there, are quite old and some of them mm -hmm. have had multiple cycles of whiskey placed in them or spirit. That one on the far right is an ex rum cask. Hmm. Um, these casks have very little, some of them have very little flavor to add uh, to the spirit. And it can be amazing what happens in those, what I call a neutral cask. These are mainly oxygen dependent reactions that are happening in that neutral cask rather than extraction type or, or additive type, uh, uh, you know, steps. Mm -hmm. And those, those ox, oxidation dependent um, uh, reactions can really have a positive impact on the taste. So they can, what I, you know, when I see it and people sense it in different ways, but for me, it rounds out the edges of a whiskey. It makes it less sharp, less, less of a, a somewhat less of a bite. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's the reason why if you taste our higher proof whiskey, like our um, our barrel strength Founders Reserve, that's a high proof whiskey, but that's a smooth whiskey. You got to be careful with that. That that that's yeah. That <laughs> there's a lot of alcohol in that, and it's uh, delicious. It's crazy. You can drink that and just add a touch of water or none, mm -hmm. and it's quite smooth. And that effect do for me at least what I believe is the effect of the neutral cask. Um, mm -hmm amazing you know that that that's why i think when you get a scotch that's been aged for so long it's quite smooth you know and even despite the fact that they're typically a they're a phenol they have a smoky they're using a smoked barley 
that 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 can give it quite a sharpness. You know, mm -hmm. you age a whiskey in a neutral cast, like an ex bourbon cast that's had multiple cycles. It's amazing how nice it can make it. Um, and then you get into the, the 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 casks that have had more flavorful uh, um, compound or uh, uh, liquids in them, such as uh, sherry or port or rum. There are many, many others. Uh, uh, and um, there you're getting a combo effect, I think. So you're getting the oxidative effect because, you know, oxygen is moving out of all of these casks. But as well, you're getting an, an additive effect of the spirit that was in it before. Um, and mm -hmm. so when I'm thinking about a finishing cask like we've done with the port and the rum, I'm trying to complement, you know, the you think about a port or a rum, there are some very nice flavors that are in those spirits. I love those spirits. And and there are some nice sweet flavors. So, you, you know, I'm, I'm trying again to add or, or complement some of our our sweetness, and but not overdo it. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. You have to be careful. I mean, for some of these, yeah, for some of these uh, finishing casts, particularly the port ones, yeah. it takes very little time for that that port taste to be imparted to Impact that. It, yeah, yeah. I don't mind. I like that support. <laughs> I, I love it. That oh, I love it. Yeah, really nice. But you mm -hmm. can overdo it. You know, I've you can yeah. Spirits where it was a bit overdone, and and we're you got to be careful because. Um, you know, some of those casks that we used, it was done in six weeks. And, and uh, so you have to keep a close eye on that. Whereas the rum, yeah, the rum was a much slower process. That was six plus months. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So it, it, it really varies depending. It, it, a lot of it has to do with the alcohol percentage of the spirit that was in it pr prior to putting the, the whiskey in there. Um, also, the environment where you're putting it, the, the heat the heat plays a big role mm -hmm. as well. Um so anyways, again. Right. No, that, that actually leads me into my the next question I had. Um, you kind of answered it, but if you'd like to describe how you decide on how to finish a whiskey and where you choose your, your finishing casks from. Well, I try, you know, I try to find a good quality cask, one that was made with good oak and aged with, and, and put what was put in it was a good, a good quality uh, spirit, one that I, I can count on to be you know, well-tasting and well-aged. Mm -hmm. Um, how do I decide? It's it's an interesting thing, you know. It's um, I it depends on what I'm seeing in the spirit that we're about to finish, mm -hmm. and um, you know, for me, it's been an interesting journey through this past. I don't know how many years we've been doing this six eight <laughs> years. Um, I I'm always trying to think of the consumer and what I think the people I'm trying to make a good whiskey for would like. Um, also me, what I would like to a degree, but mm -hmm. I mean, mainly I'm trying to think about what people would like. And I, you know, I, 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 that, that drives it to some degree, but the big thing that drives it is I'm trying to complement what we've already got. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, choosing those spirits, I've thought about the beer, I've thought about the other, the, the sherry, I've, I, and I've thought about these various things and I, I'm trying to not follow fads. I'm trying to do things that complement what we've got to begin with. And, and uh, um, yeah, so it's, it's a various things. Availability, you know, sometimes things are just not available or they're too expensive and it just, it's just not worth it. And, and uh, um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm curious about, we haven't done Sherry yet. Um, I was about to ask which ones do you want to experiment with? So Yeah, I, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm curious about sherry. Obviously, sherry is a very traditional uh, cask, both for aging from start to finish and for yeah. finishing and so on. So I I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> I hope you do. I love sherry cask things. I know. I, I do too, awesome. you know, and, and I, I think it could be very nice. And uh, I, I think there's a very, very good chance that that will happen. Um, but I'm trying to also j just just think about the consumer in, in how we do this. You know, I... I the American palate is different than the European palate. And, and uh, um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we like our bourbon here. We like our rye. And, and so those those tastes are things that I'm I'm trying to bring into this, but then also not overshadow the wonderful tastes of malt and malted barley. Right, that's yeah. Quite, you know, so. That's going to remain the star no matter what. 
you pick, right? The multi it's got to remain. Yeah, for me, it's got to remain the star. That's what we're doing here. We're a malt whiskey producer, and I I love those tastes. I, it comes, mm -hmm. from, uh, you know, yeah, it comes from an appreciation of good beer, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the fact that we have such good barley here, and and so number one, I'm trying not to overshadow that malt whiskey, uh, malt right. malted barley start. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, you know, we'll see. There's some interesting wines or, or casks that have been used to age wine. Typically, it's for a shorter period. Those mm -hmm. types of things, like the port and the sherry, those are things that would those those finishes would happen very quickly because that's a low alcohol content, uh, you know, uh, uh, liquid. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so there's various different ways we can go. So yeah, if that if that mm -hmm. answers your question. Yeah, that's that. It does perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm curious for what you guys were hoping to do in the future, and definitely answer that one. And yeah. keep your eyes open. <laughs> it's oh, like definitely is excited for a sherry cask as well. So maybe maybe now's the time. <laughs> yeah, sherry. You know, the Macallan has always been an influencer for me. I love the Macallan, and I, I love what they do with sherry. I've actually never been to their distillery, but I really look forward to that. But, you know, so I, I de that, that'll definitely be something we do. When we do it, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Um, we, uh, yeah, so, it, but it's, it's, it's so fun, to, you know, the, to have access to the amazing uh, new oak casks that we have in the United States is really quite amazing. And, and so I yeah. want to take advantage of that. That's not the same in the rest of the world. We have amazing forests that grow these amazing oak trees. And so I want to take advantage of that. And um, but then you know, like I say, the, the the finishing, whether it's the neutral casks, we see that as a really important tool for us. Um, and then the finishing cask, you know, that mm -hmm. that's also quite good. And I think people really like that as well. So um, that's going to be our thing. We 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 have a we have a grain bill that I think we'll stick with, and uh, we're exploring different distilleries. And then we'll also, um, uh, but the barrel is where we really, uh, we really have some interesting things to do. And, and the fact that we use new and previously used and then quite neutral, I think that's quite, uh, quite fun and unique. And I hope the consumer. Yeah. That's really cool yeah. to have that. Yeah. I got to say like the, the whiskey you guys are making is 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 very malt it's very malt forward and and you don't lose it at all which Not is all, which yeah. is great um yeah. but it's also one of the most american american single malts that i've ever tasted you always yeah. see these um american single malts that are coming out um and and they're they're really trying to imitate what they're doing over in scotland or yeah. or, or, or ireland mm -hmm. and and, but you guys, you, you really embrace the new oak and you are doing more of a, a toast than a char, which yeah. you can really tell in the flavor. And I always get like toasted marshmallows on, on the whiskey and That's just great. really great stuff. But it's you really it's, want to go camping with the wonder back. <laughs> it's, it is just one of the most, yeah, it's, it's very high barrel impact. Yeah. Right. It's single malt whiskey, which is really hard to find and i really appreciate it with with what we're doing here yeah i Maybe. love you to say that yeah and I, i'm very happy to hear you say that because um yeah we're, we we appreciate the tradition of of single malt and we appreciate what's been done uh mainly in europe uh before us and and we love what they've done but we're not trying to copy that we we also know we recognize that in the u.s we have an amazing uh, whiskey tradition and um and w which people in america and the world love i mean we, we make some amazing whiskey so uh that was got, that has been our goal to sort of marry those things marry some of the old world traditions with the new things that we have or somewhat new things here in the united states particularly the new the new oak and um i hope that's what people appreciate uh because blake like you say that's uh that is a bit different than and and uh but it's also what i love i mean i i i really love the tastes of those old world what i would call old world spirits and then the new yeah. world stuff, the stuff that we've done here you know that stuff that we we've, we've talked about in the past that we all love uh the rise and the bourbons and so uh mm -hmm. that's great to hear you say that and i hope uh, well if we stop doing it can you please let me know because i'd like to know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I will. I'm going to keep buying it. Like, we'll, just it's... Be your we'll just be your tester. Send us bottles. We'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, if you need <laughs> taste testers, let me know. You guys getting off the rails here. You might want to think. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, anyway, are we being, uh, are we getting, oh, rap, let's wrap. Sasha is saying let's wrap. We're talking too much there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's been a great conversation, though. It's Definitely. Good. Yeah. Yes. And Funny it's our, as our last one, like, I'm finishing my my batch oh, one today on, okay. on the on the last episode. I'll finish my batch one with you guys. Oh, man. And that's oh, great. Man. I, uh, yeah, it's good to see that one. one of my, yeah. Definitely one of my favorite single malts of all time oh, and man, really fun. appreciate it oh god i did it, it raises the bar and i hope i hope this release now that we have this uh this fall is enjoyable for you all because i'm trying to do that one again but from a different mm -hmm. way so it'll be uh i, I uh, anyways <laughs> pressure's on <laughs> well, i'm sure i'm sure it's going to be amazing <laughs> and there's only one way to find out buy it <laughs> <laughs> exactly well, you guys, once again, I thought that that was a really great um, episode. Um, and over the last kind of four episodes, I suppose, we've really covered everything from, you know, where does American single malt sit there, sit in the world of whiskeys through to, you know, the barley, um, the process, and finally ending up on the barrels. And um, mm -hmm. I, for one, have found it's been super informative, and I'm sure people will uh, watching will feel the same as well and if you haven't gone back and and watched the other episodes I encourage you to do that so you get kind of the full kind of 101 um, in terms of American single malt uh, process of, of making this fine whiskey um, so once again that's neat guys we haven't got Marcus here today but we do have Blake and Sean thank you so much for partnering with us we yeah. have had a blast these this. Wednesdays um, it's just been lovely and um, thank you Phil thanks to Maggie who's in the background for kind of producing things and putting it all together so happy Whiskey Wednesday everybody and um, please stay in touch uh, let us know if you have any questions we're happy to answer them over email if we haven't got to your question today so um, we'll see you soon yes right. thank you, uh, Blake Sean thank you very much guys really appreciate it especially doing covering the science stuff that's the very very good <laughs> <laughs> we did our best uh, from it's not your first, that's great it's not your first language but you guys I really really appreciate it and, and having these chats uh, with you is certainly uh, it's been super fun so I hope we can uh, resume them in in the future oh, definitely okay. take care be safe cheers everybody thank you